Nyaje, Bazu. I'm back in Nairobi and I'm in Westlands. The fun neighborhood with all the restaurants and clubs. Unfortunately though, today is the very last day on my visa. So I'm flying out of here tonight. And I've been doing some reflections about my time here. And I think I've had a pretty good time here in Kenya. But there are also some things I thought about that I don't like. You could even say some things that I hate. We're gonna take a quick walk around Westlands. I'm gonna list off the five things I hate about Kenya. Eh, Kenyans, calm down. I can see you getting angry already. Machiza kama mimi. Wait, wait. Machiza chini. All right, the first thing that I hate, you know what I hate, Kenya? I hate that you lied to all of us. <laughs> you made me think that this is a country just full of, uh, I'm, I'm, I, I, just full of uh, super aggressive, rude people, people that were gonna be assholes. You made me think that there were gonna be thieves everywhere. I was gonna get robbed at gunpoint, just walking down the street. And you know what? I mean, these people probably exist, but I've been going around this country for almost two months and I haven't met any of them. I mean, maybe besides the, uh, the police, but I'll get into that later. Now, I've been all over this country, even to Carissa, and I just kept running into friendly people. <laughs> A lot of people here, they call Nairobi, night robbery, and they make it seem incredibly dangerous. But well, my impression now is that actually you just need some basic street smarts. The same thing that you would need in New York City, for example. Don't be an idiot. Don't do something stupid like, say, leave your bag on a bus. And if you can avoid stuff like that, I don't think you're going to have any problems. Now, I'm not saying that Nairobi is as safe as, like, Tokyo or Geneva or something like that. <laughs> but it's also not... Civil War Syria. Do you think that Kenya is dangerous? Not really. Not really? Not really. And yeah, why not? Because we've been living here. We've been here. We were yeah. born here. We've been living here for more than 40 years. We have challenges, yeah. but not dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. Many foreigners outside of Kenya, they think it's dangerous here. So that's why I wanted to ask this question. Not at all. Not at all. For foreigners, Kenya is the most safest place to live in. Maybe for us, it can be dangerous for us yeah. as Kenyans. But for foreigners, no. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Karibu, Wazungu. So yeah, it's a serious thing. Because I know foreigners, personally, who haven't come here because they think it's dangerous. So you gotta work on this, Kenya. You gotta change your image. You gotta let everybody know what's really going on here. You gotta let them know that you have a country here of nice people. Which brings me to my next point. The second thing that I hate about Kenya, I hate how easy it is to make friends here. <laughs> I hate it because I never have any time to do anything else because I'm always talking to people, I'm always being invited to things. It's kind of amazing, honestly. Kenya might be the least pretentious country I've ever been to. Although, of course, Tanzania and Uganda are right there with you. But only here have I seen that I can hang out with somebody from the upper class, lower class, middle class, whatever, it doesn't matter. They'll still, like, hang out with you, invite you to things. <laughs> I've talked with the relatives of Obama. I've hung out with family members of uh, Tom Mboya, a Kenyan hero. They own hotels. And they still invited me to things. <laughs> now another thing that's very distinctive here, even compared to uh, Tanzania, is that people are always joking around here. <laughs> They're always laughing. And it kind of just puts you in a good mood all the time, you know, to just be around positive people all day and night. <laughs> I mean, it's to the extent that even the police are laughing and joking around as they ask you for a bribe. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, I also gotta be, I gotta be honest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you recognize me. I'm making a video right now. You good? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. How you doing? How's Nairobi treating you? Hey. This is my last day. <laughs> yeah, Siko <laughs> Yamwisho. Yeah. Where Bye. you guys where you guys going? I'm uh, in the Wapi. We're going back. Yeah. You're going back here. Okay, yeah. cool. 
I've got uh, what I was just saying right there. But um, anyway, yeah. I mean, you know, if I'm gonna be completely honest, you know, not there are, especially if you're in a bazungu, there are people that are gonna come and ask you for like, you know, kind of ridiculous things. People all have all different kinds of motives, and the really common one is like they're gonna come up and ask for money. But you know what? No country is perfect. We have annoying people in every country. <laughs> but I feel the amount of people in Kenya that I'd like to hang out with and get a beer and just chill is much higher than other places. I feel like this is the most random Makapu design I've seen yet. You got like the Terminator over here and you've got Def Jam recordings on the door. <laughs> Alright, now we're on uh, Woodvale Street. <laughs> and if you're coming into Nairobi, it may be useful to you to know that this is the main like, club and bar street in Westlands. And all of Nairobi, you could say. <laughs> Some of them might be going right now, let me just let me walk by and see. I still don't even know like what this place behind me is called, but if you come here on like a Friday and probably many other days, it's gonna be packed with people and there's gonna be music. The only thing to keep in mind though is that there's still a curfew at 10 p.m. here. So these bars and clubs on this street, they actually start shutting down around like 8 p.m. Which leads to this hilarious situation where Kenyans like right after work at like 4 p.m. they rush over here <laughs> And basically at like 6, 7 p.m. you have the same situation you would have in like, I don't know, a normal place like Tanzania at like 3 in the morning. To be honest, I feel like the most common advertisement that I see, not just in Kenya but all over Africa, is uh, ads for alcohol. Like beers, different liquors, and uh, I'm pretty sure there's like some social justice warrior somewhere in America that is mad about that. But I say, fuck it. <laughs> if you have a demand in a market for a product, then advertise it. And you know what? People here like to drink and they have more fun than us for that reason. <laughs> All right, the, uh, the third thing that I actually do hate, but there's a lot of goddamn traffic there. Hey. Hi, <laughs> Mambo. I've been following you. You've been following me? Yeah. Oh, nice. I'm, make, I'm making a video right now, actually. You want to? <laughs> Give me a shout out. Yeah, shout out. What's your name? My name is Lydia Duku. Lydia Duku. Okay. Uh -huh. Lydia Duku is awesome. Come find her in Nairobi. <laughs> Yo, what, what should I do? It's my last day. What? You're leaving? I'm sorry. Yeah. Polisana. Why? Yeah. Funny. I've been in Naivasha. Yeah, I have been in Naivasha. I haven't been to Eldoret. I've been to Mombasa. Mm -hmm. yeah. I saw your video about the guy. Everybody knows me. It yeah. Is so fun. Yeah, yeah. And now everybody knows you. <laughs> You know, the fourth thing that I hate about Kenya is that this country is not portrayed accurately anywhere in the media. Seriously, and this is your fault, Kenya, for not promoting yourself properly. Because I think in the Western world, at best, they think of Kenya as a place you go for safaris that's still kind of poor. <laughs> but you know what? Kenya is actually the most developed country, not only in East Africa, but in most of Sub-Saharan Africa. And I've been really surprised and impressed by what I've seen here. What I love about Nairobi in particular is that you can be here and you can still obviously feel and know that you're in an African city in an African country, but it's not that hard to go and find like the Western comforts that you're gonna be missing, especially food. 
So more than just visit, Nairobi is actually a city I would love to live in. You can find almost everything you could find in America here. For example, you know, all the electronics you need, video games, camera equipment. Although to be honest, all I really use is like a selfie stick. <laughs> you could find the medicine you need. You can find restaurants with cuisines from all around the world. And they're actually good. <laughs> you can find all the same alcohol that I drown my sorrows with back in America. And ooh, seeing as how it's starting to rain, bad luck for today. I'm gonna go and try it and show you some of these things I was just talking about. The problem is they're in a mall, so hopefully I don't get stopped from filming. So I'm here now in the Westgate Mall, which I think is probably the nicest mall in Nairobi. That was sadly also the victim of a terror attack like seven years ago. Now, normally, <laughs> you would not catch me filming inside the mall. That would probably be too boring. But here in Nairobi, it's a different story. Because I think, to most of the world, this is kind of like a remarkable thing. <laughs> this is Africa, all right? <laughs> This is Kenya, and I don't think you could easily tell the difference between here and a Western country. I mean, look. I mean, right over here, you even got Carrefour, which is like the French version of Whole Foods or something like that. You have to scan a QR code in order to actually read the menu here. But, that does serve a point though. Clearly, we're not in a poor country if they expect you to be able to like scan a QR code to read the menu. Alright, so you know what this is? This is a goddamn milkshake. I haven't had a milkshake in like three years. And here I am, having one in Nairobi, Kenya. Another thing that I really like here in Nairobi, and in Kenya in general, is how nice, comfortable, relatively affordable the housing is. For roughly $500 a month, you can get a pretty nice place here in Nairobi in a decent neighborhood. And if you want to spend something like $1,000 a month on rent, then you can pretty much live like a king in the best neighborhoods. You have like this really kind of nice situation in Kenya and in Nairobi where because you have an actual middle class, more housing has been built. So the housing is not only nicer, but cheaper than some of the neighboring countries. Now, Kenya also really deserves credit for its infrastructure. Regardless of whether that infrastructure was paid for with the Chinese loan or not, it doesn't really matter because it's needed. And I appreciate it. <laughs> now, you know, Napenda Tanzania. And it's a lot of But I gotta say, the infrastructure in those two countries is a little less developed. Here in Nairobi, you've got a train that goes between Nairobi and Mombasa. And it's more modern and it's faster. You've got paved roads all over Nairobi. And you can just see new infrastructure projects, like the new highway that's going from airport all the way to Westlands. You can see these all over the city. It's pretty nice. And of course there's still poverty in this country. I've seen it. But Kenya, you gotta learn how to sell yourself better. You're an inspiration for the entire continent. And now it's raining pretty bad. Damn it. Alright. Let's go find my Uber. Alright mom. I mean, it's supposed to be like a hate video, not a love video of Kenya. 
So let me go back to things that I hate about Kenya. Number, what are we up to, like number five now? The fifth thing I hate about Kenya is the weather in July and August. Because it gets kind of cold, it rains a bit, you kind of need a sweater at night. I, I don't like going anywhere where like in July I have to wear a sweater, you know? That just doesn't feel right to me as someone from New York. But the weather's pretty nice the rest of the year. My Uber driver just asked me, why can't I just stay here in Kenya? <laughs> why do I have to go to other countries? <laughs> I mean, yeah. You don't like the other countries? Or Kenya, Kenya is the best? Kenya ni borra? Uh, probably. I put them on the spot here. Alright, now the sixth thing that I hate. I hate that there's so many languages to learn here in Kenya. <laughs> you know, like, I'm a language guy. I love to learn new languages. And I have like a ton of respect for the Kenyans. Because basically everyone here is trilingual. In English, Swahili, and a tribal language. Like Kisi, or Kikuyu, or Somali. But you know, the crazy thing is, <laughs> some of these tribal languages are completely different from Swahili, right? To give you an example of how crazy it is that everybody here is trilingual in three very different languages, imagine if growing up in America, you had to learn English, Chinese, and Turkish, and that was just normal life. <laughs> That's basically Kenya. But it's been so much fun just learning at least, you know, a few words and pleasantries in the different languages from the country. And then just going around, trying them out. And the people, a lot of people are just really appreciative. <laughs> They're happy because, you know, who else learns these languages? I just hate that there's too many of them to learn. I don't have the time for it, you know? <laughs> but another thing that I thought I would hate, I thought I would hate the Swahili here in Kenya because the Tanzanians kept telling me it's gonna be really hard for me to understand. But uh, now after spending more time here in Nairobi, listening to uh, the shung here, or slang. <laughs> it's, uh, it has like a predictable pattern to it, and it's kind of fun, like, it's basically like a mix of Swahili, English, and Kikuyu, which is the biggest tribe around here in Nairobi. <laughs> and you just got like, loads of stupid little phrases that you could use when you're walking around. I started learning some of it, but I never know when's like an appropriate situation to use these words, you know? <laughs> Alright, the seventh and final thing that I hate about Kenya, and unfortunately there's no joke for this one, I hate the corruption of the Kenyan police, because, damn, you know, I've been traveling around here for almost two months, and I've been stopped, I think, four or five times? and ask for money, you know, for some ridiculous reason, right? <laughs> like something like the cop will just say, uh, oh, you have a camera, now buy me a soda. Or when I was coming back from Garissa, when they're just checking everyone's like IDs and passports, <laughs> I heard, give your sister a dollar. That's right, you have corrupt female cops here as well. It's not a good look, and I know a lot of Kenyans have a problem with this as well. So, I hope, I don't know what the solution is. I hope the Kenyan government can just pay them, the Kenyan police, more money, and have more like anti-corruption training. Here we go, yeah. Okay. You're in a movie right now. Yeah. I just came back to the hotel, and they're acting all shy. They say they want a video, but they don't even, they're not sure. Okay, okay. What's, what's your name? Amelia. Amelia Kate. and Kate. Yes. Okay, yes. thank you, Sam. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, back at the hotel. I've got about one hour left until I should get to the airport. The traffic, as I said before, is notorious in Nairobi. <laughs> so, I gotta leave very early. So, let me go, uh, I don't know, fall asleep for an hour. I'll see you then. Alright, gotta go get this damn flight. Gotta go find this boat. Oh, 
Uh, Uber? All right. I got my COVID test in here. It's gonna be very important for the country I'm going to. Yeah, I'm good. All right, so we gotta go to the airport very fast. The airport, which one? The Jomo Kenyatta. Jomo Kenyatta. International, airport. yeah. How much was it? It was uh, 800. I'll give you 1,000 if you go very fast, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, you may have noticed that I've chosen to take a motorcycle, taxi, to get to the airport instead of a regular taxi. And that is because with the atrocious traffic that exists in Nairobi, I will 100% miss my flight if I don't do this. Yeah, walking around with my camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Camera, yeah. Talking to myself. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was me. That's what I do all day. This right here is the structure yeah, yeah. of the future highway going from the airport to Westlands. Stop here? Yeah, we stop here. Okay. Stop from here. All right. So the only problem with taking a boat all the way to the airport is that they're not allowed to go past this point. And there's still like at least half a kilometer <laughs> to the actual terminal. But thankfully, somebody's helping me out. Coffee? Let me show what I have. Oh, I got I got to go I test results on the original Boda. Hope that's not a problem. I'm still processing what just happened. <laughs> it's like illegal for the Bodas to go past that security checkpoint, but then I was just roped into some soldier corruption. I don't fucking know. Okay. It's, I'm ready? Okay. Alright, got 10 minutes to check in. I was starting to feel like I was going to miss this flight, but uh, I managed to check in. 
with just the test results on my phone. And uh, it's so stressful to fly nowadays because, you know, you have like all these different things for the COVID requirements in whatever country you're going to. And then you forget about one of them. <laughs> then they hold you up at the desk. But somehow it all worked out. This is uh, pretty much how I travel every single time. All right, so I'm in, I'm at the gate, and uh, I'm just gonna kick back for about 20 minutes. The only things I brought with me are obviously this camera and my laptop, which, if I'm lucky, I will edit this video on the flight. If not, I'll just drink a few beers and pass out. So, Kenya. I guess this is goodbye for now. <laughs> it's been fun. And I hope you've realized by now that I don't actually hate Kenya. <laughs> I actually love it. I just had to get your attention to actually watch this. <laughs> I think the only thing I hate is uh, just the corruption. Mainly with the police. That and the traffic. But, I don't know, one of those things did help me get to my flight faster, so I don't know what to think anymore. And the only regret that I really have is my visa's running out. I gotta leave. So I didn't have enough time to go and see all of this country, which is a lot. There's so many things to see here. I'm still gonna have to come back to go up north to Eldoret see the Turkana, to go up near the Ethiopian border. You know the drill. There's tons of stuff. And you're gonna see me back in Kenya. But, just, not just yet. <laughs> see the flight staff coming. Almost time to board, and almost time to bring my two months in Kenya to an end. So, you know what? Listen, I did this for Tanzania. But now, I want you guys, the Tanzanians, to step out of the room for a minute. This is a conversation for just me and Kenya. Kenya, now listen. I know some of you were mad when last time I said that uh, that neighbor to the south was a little more polite and you guys were the rude ones. But you know what? I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm being honest. You, you guys are the ones I'd rather hang out with and go party. And just mix Swahili and English, and whatever other language together. I've had a lot of fun in this country. I've gotten into some crazy situations, I can't lie. <laughs> but overall, it's been a very positive experience in Kenya. I haven't been robbed, I haven't been kidnapped, nothing too bad. And the whole time, honestly, I've been really impressed with what I saw. Like I said, Nairobi is a pretty cool city, a very cool city, and out of all the cities I've seen so far, it's definitely the one I would live in. Kenya may not be perfect, but that doesn't matter, you're on the right track. I can't believe it. I just go by so quickly. Kenya, come over here real quick. Nippy and Gumi Boys. Oh, what? That wasn't enough for you? Uh, you come here too. Alright? Nako pen the pen. This won't be the last you see of me. Just for a little while. Tutu Nana, not time. Thank you.